Good morning, everyone. This is Becky here at Aunt Bex Creations, and I'm popping on to finish something we started in July, but I figured I would take about an hour this morning and finish up the last few envelopes. If you remember, we did these. We opened our envelopes in July, and we did painty, painter, painty paper backgrounds. And then after I had signed off, I did some painting on them additionally by adding a focal image and a saying. And that's what I've done on these. And they're, these have been glued back together and I've signed and dated them and I put decorated by Aunt Bex Creations as well as my signature on them. So they're signed, dated and signed twice by my YouTube channel and by my name. Good morning, Mary Lou. Good morning, Janet. So this is what I did after I had signed off. And I think I'd already shared these with you guys where I'd added the gnome and the saying on that one. This one, I just added some flowers and flowers on that one. And then I still have this one and this one. This one needs its focal image. And that's what we're going to do today. And um, this one, I've got the focal image and the saying, but I wanted to put the varnish on it. And I, hi Pam, I've started doing it like Dee Dee, and there's not much left in this, so I'm just going to pour it out. You pour out a lot. Don't use a brush. Don't use a brayer. You get a lot on here. I just want to, I'm trying to use up all the little bits of stuff. We're going to let that one go now. And I've got another one here. And Dee Dee just puts a generous amount down. It looks like a lot. But then just use your finger. And don't push down into the paper. Just kind of float across the paper. There goes Greg's tea. Steep time is up. And spread it out. And by doing this, you don't get a bunch of streaking. I think I just glued some cat hair in it. Oh, well, it's coming from my house. And if you start running out, just squeeze some more out there. And then I'll set this aside to, you know, dry till tomorrow. And then I'll glue the envelope back together and it'll be ready to mail. But this gives you a nice finish. Beautiful finish. I've already done it on those other ones. And I know this looks like a lot, but it, it gives you a beautiful finish without distorting your artwork. It really works good. All right. That's it. And then you just set this aside. It looks really wet. It is really wet. But uh, we're going to set it aside to dry off to the side. And I need a baby wipe because I'm gluing my fingers together. So I'm thinking because this envelope base here looks like it has bubbles on it. I was going to do one of my babies um, that I like to do where it looks like he's looking up. So I'm going to fold the bottom part of this up so I know where the bottom of my envelope is. And I forgot to turn the autofocus off again. One day, one day, I will remember to turn that off before I come on here. I had a horrible time getting on this morning. I don't know. I, there's something going on with my laptop. Um, it all started yesterday when I was trying to um, do that video. The Crafty Visage, that is Deborah. Is that right? I could be wrong. Let me go turn Greg's timer off because he's gone and got in the shower. He lets his tea steep for ages, so much longer than I do. <laughs> so to do the cutie babies, Dawn, not sorry, Dawn. Some days I'm better with names than others. I'll try to remember better. But I just got out some um, kind of flesh tones. Oh, and this one's not been opened yet. 
and I know you all came to, to, to make sure you got to see me struggle with the plastic on the top of paint. And I know that Dee Dee and Janet come on this morning, so I'm not going to be on long. I just want to get this last envelope painted. Um, so I've got some warm beige. I'm probably putting out too much, but I'll use it on something. This one's natural buff. I've got my little um, small composition book I can paint all the excess of paint into. And another one that's not been opened. I did go and get a few paints the last time Joanne's had them on sale. If I was really good, I'd get just the basic paints and mix my own colors as I go, but I'm just not there. And this is Parisian pink. This is Desert Turquoise. This is one of my favorite colors. And I do not need a lot of this. If I can get any out of it, it'll be a miracle. Thank goodness I don't need a whole lot. Whoa. I didn't need that much of that either. And some white. And yes, my paint thing is disgustingly gross, but oh well. I'm just going to do kind of the shape of a baby's, the top of a baby's head here. Ooh, that one's really separated. I don't know if that's going to do anything. All right, might have to let this dry in between. I'm gonna shake this one up better. Let's see, good morning to everybody that's popped in. It is early, it's um, 10 till seven here. So I have about an hour before I need to worry, or an hour and a half before I need to worry about Dee Dee coming on. What material are you using for the envelope? It's just a purchased envelope that I opened and we painted them. It's just, um, see, it was a white like invitation envelope or a card envelope. I used to know a lady that knew a lady that did the cards at the store. And you know, when the, the cards get returned, the envelopes just get trashed. So if you come up on a card lady doing the displays in the United States, ask her if she's got some envelopes that are headed to the trash. Um, she'll just give them to you. Hey, Vicki. Um, so that's where I get a lot of these or got a lot of these. I don't have that opportunity now, but I do find envelopes, boxes and boxes of envelopes when we're out thrifting. I almost bought another package of them, but I said, no, I need to use up what I have first, and then I'll get some more. I'm going to put some of that paint in another little cup. First, I have to throw it on the floor. I don't, my hands are having a tish, issue. Tissue? Well, maybe it is a tissue. I don't know. I can't speak. It's Monday. Give me a break. Julie. Hi, Julie. Green macaroni. I hadn't seen you in a while. I'm going to be trying to do a few more um, standalone videos. There we go. We're getting some better coverage. The um, one I did yesterday, it took me two days to film. And then it was over an hour and a half long. So every took thing took forever. It made the laptop go nuts. It was 
the my laptop when it went in and I had just added the last few clips on it started going crazy and it would flash on and then black screen flash on and then I told Scott I said either it's working really hard or I've killed the laptop just doing this hour and a half long video so I said let's get out of the house so that's why we went thrifting yesterday and I want to thank everybody that's been helping me um, find out more about Barbara Dunn, the lady that, or yeah, the lady that uh, did those paintings that are prints or whatever they were, and gave me a lot of really good information and guidelines. Um, it's very helpful. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some. Hang on, just a second. This is not covering fast enough to suit me. So, I'm going to do an old painter's trick, and I'm going to put some silver or gray on, and then we'll come back with the other. I know it looks crazy, but it, this will cover the background, and then the color will lay smoother. This is a trick you can do if you move into a house that has walls that are like really dark. Like the lady that bought our previous house had to put, she told me, um, she put like 12 coats of paint on to cover the lipstick red. And then I learned this trick from a friend whose father was a painter. Always paint gray first and then you only have to put one coat of gray. And then the next color you put down will cut, you know, will go on smoother. So let's let that dry and I'll chit chat with you guys. Um, I hope everybody's got a good start to your week. Um, coffee and paint. How can one start this morning any better? Maybe some rain for Texas. Oh, I'd, I'd gladly send you a little bit that we got the last few days. Um, with the storms brewing out in the Atlantic, um, you know, we, we always here in South Carolina, I'm, I'm an hour and a half from Charleston, three hours from Myrtle Beach. But anytime there's a storm off the coast, we get weather to the middle of the state where I am. When we were up in Greenville, we only got the storms that came the opposite direction in the winter up over the mountain. Yep, it's an undercoat of gray and it will block the background and then you can put your paint on top. Little Red Wagon, good morning. Mary was asking about you, Renee. She said she was worried about you. So you have to pop her a message and let her know how you're doing. She was asking about you the other day. Um, yeah, we, that's why I told Scott, I said, it, for our retirement, I'm a bit sick of being this close to the coast. I'd like a different life experience for my over 60 years. So we're leaning toward moving closer to the mountains again, not up over the mountains, but maybe in them or near them and live a different, a different life because we enjoyed our time in Greenville. But we do also want to get out of South Carolina. So we're looking at Tennessee. We'll see. Tennessee or the western part of Virginia. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Time will tell. I'm going to dry this a little bit faster here. Heat gun alert. It's pretty warm in here, but it's also humid. So now we, I need, um, let me get some paper towels or a rag. I have some rags here. I don't know. Get some 
paper towels. Um, as it goes, we always talk about food, right? So I've got to tell you what I made yesterday <laughs> because it turned out really good and we, we really enjoyed it. Um, I had gotten, they were Carolina Pride um, smoked sausage. What are they called? The little guys, um, like the cocktail sausages. Well, I took those and I browned them in my cast iron skillet really good. And then I took them out of the skillet and did the roux for um, scallop potatoes where you cook some onion and then you add some flour and then you add some milk and salt and pepper. And I, yeah, little smokies, that's it. Well, then I had peeled and kind of pre parboiled my potatoes, the slices of potato. I drained the potatoes off and I made scallop potatoes with the cooked little smokies. Oh my God. It was so good. It was so good. We were amazed at how good they were. This paint is just so weird. And we did that yesterday. And then Saturday we had gone to the Goodwill that's kind of on the way to Scott's work. And, uh, we stopped in the Publix out that way because the only store I have close to me is uh, Food Lion. And I just don't like Food Lion. I'm sorry, Food Lion. I just don't like you. You don't have anything. But we got the Eckrich sausage that's skinless, uh, smoked sausage that's skinless and some hot dog buns. And we took the um, Eckrich and cut it into hot dog links. And then in half, and Scott cooked them in one of those pans. It's got the grit, like a grill grid in it. And I, I in another pan, I cooked um, some bell pepper, onion, and a jalapeno. And we had those like hot dogs with mustard. Oh, the three of us wolfed that down like it was nothing. That was so good. So I've had a lot of sausage over the weekend. <laughs> Oh my gosh. There's something wrong with this paint. I should march it back and say, look, this paint is messed up. Let's see, I've got that gray there. I can use it. Here in a sack. All right. I'm going to give him some eyeballs now. Well, let's dry it a little bit first, or his eyeballs will not be like I want them. It wasn't that hot. Um, it was one whole jalapeno, seeds and all, but we like hot stuff a lot. dry a little bit from the back too here because this is just a um, real thin paper envelope and the paint seeps through quite easily all right might do another layer of the the baby color here first But if you don't mind the background, you know, peeking through the, whatever you're painting on, you don't have to be this thorough. I might fill this up with some, some goodies and send it to Brittany. Her baby's due next month. Brittany Linger. I don't know if you guys watch her or not. All right. 
I'm going to put some of this lighter color just on the top of the head here. Uh, my baby's got warts. I made the paint bubble. Sorry, baby. All right. Let's just give him some. going to be wide-eyed. Oh, there's a lady walking by with a dog. I was wondering why the neighbor's cats went flying through. She's getting out early. She must have to work today walking the dog. The more I try to even them out, the worse it gets. So I'm going to stop right now. Sorry, baby. I'll fix that in a minute. Uh-oh. That's okay. He looks kind of crazy right now. <laughs> Come on, just a tiny little bit of black. I need enough for two pupils. Oh, it's fun and very stress relieving, Renee. You should do it. Pull some paint out. I'm going to do. Picking up a little bit darker blue. Just to put some little lines in here and there. Now, I saw these laying over there, and I said, you know, I could go on and, you know, do a little painting on that envelope, get it finished so I could mail it, and visit with you guys a little bit on this Monday morning. Grab some of the black and we'll give him some pupils. Of course, it's, it's not dry underneath, so it's mixing with the blue and the white. We can build it up. That's the good thing about paint is you can, you can change it a little as you go. Just by adding another layer. I might have to dry this a little bit to get this to do what I want. I'm going to dry it. 
Going back to sleep. Good morning, Angie. It is early for you. Um, it's the Deco Art Duraclear. You find it by the paint. And I just put a bunch on and spread it out. If you want your baby to have big ears, you could put big ears. But I like to do just do the very top of the head. You could also add nostrils if you wanted to, but mine's just peaking today. And I'd like him not to look so surprised. So I'm going to give him some eyelids here. I wish this paint would behave better. Let's see. Come across here. Cover this back up. Might have to look and see if I've got some other paint. It's like it doesn't want to combine with the binder. And I shook the daylights out of it. And these aren't meant to be, you know, great works of art. These are just. Art to make somebody smile along the way. Let's see here. Maybe put a little bit of this lighter bit on here. Just to cover a little bit more of what I'm trying to cover up. And I can come back in with the other. But we had a pretty good weekend. Scott is fighting a sinus infection. But since he's working a temporary job, he can't really, he feels like he can't take time off because if he takes time off, then we don't get in the income from that day. It's, it's kind of rough. He loves this job, and he'll start teaching on the 18th, we found out. So after the 18th, Monday nights, Tuesday nights, and Thursday nights, I'll be able to sit and watch people and maybe do some filming or something. All right. Um, I think I'd like a little bit of brown. Give me just a few little... And light brown, like a tan, like a little tan color here. This is golden brown. Ugh, putting out way more paint than I need. Pick up just a little, just give him some wispy. It's a baby. He doesn't have that much hair. Oh, well, I'll take that back. Some babies born, are born with a ton of hair. Mine was bald. <laughs> I figure I, I burned all his hair off eating all that hot salsa when I was pregnant. I might use my Posca black pen to do some outlining and stuff. So I'm going to give him a single hair up here with a little curly cue in it like that. 
and I'll bring that, um, you know, out more with the Posca pen. So there's his single hair. And I want to darken the eyeballs. Good morning to Ray D. Good morning. <laughs> Vicki, I've had that same problem. When we were in Greenville, the girls at the counter there, um, they love the envelopes. Down here, not so much. They're, they just want to, I don't know. They're not very personable. I think because we're in a larger city. They're more short with everybody. They just want to get you moved through a line. Told Scott, I'm ready to live in a small town somewhere. I don't care if everybody knows my business. I just, I miss living in a small town. Found out the little grocery store, the Great American, in my hometown is closing. So I guess they'll have to drive to Binghamton or Norwich to get groceries. Because there's not a grocery store there anymore. And that's where we would go once a month on the 3rd because I grew up with my grandmother and we lived on Social Security. And um, personal hygiene and basic baking things like flour, yeast, and that kind of thing was all we really ever had to buy. I mean, because we were on the farm. We had, um, you know, meat from the animals. We could go fishing. We had, you know, our vegetable garden. Um it was, it was a much lighter trip to the grocery store because we spent all the money on fertilizers and that, this, that, and the other. Your population's around 2,000. I don't know what the current population of Casey is. It's got to be like 30,000. It, it's grown so much because we've got so many new developments moved in. I need to dry this really quick. And I'll pull out some pastas, and this is nearly done. Let's see here. Whoopsie doodles. The cat named Lars from next door is out here. Eyeing my bird feeders. I'm going to have to go chase him off. All right. I'm going to do a little outlining with black. Hi, Kathy D. Yep. My graduating class had 121 or 122 kids in it. That, that's how small town my where I grew up was. So I'm just going to kind of bring him. out a little bit more and just do a little outlining. I don't want to go over his hair there. And make your lines broken so that it looks more sketchy. And then I'm going to Here we go. Maybe bring his eyebrows out just a few more little Little marks. Then maybe my son is struggling with day shift. <laughs> He's not a He's not a day person. He never has been. But they want to make sure he's trained right this time. Give him a little 
few little eyelashes here. So there's the baby peeking. And then I'll put a saying on it. I don't know what saying I'll put. Let me go grab those. Oh, you know what he's missing? He's missing the highlight in his eye. I was like, why is he looking so weird? All you got to do is put a few little dots in. There we go. Now he doesn't look quite as creepy. Isn't it cute? All right, let me go grab the little sayings that I have here. Oh, that's perfect. It's the little things that make life big. And I'll, I'll glue that on. I don't trust these stickers <laughs> at all. So we'll put just a little glue on here. Of course, the, when I varnish it, that'll hold it on too. Is it going to fit? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So there he is. We'll give that glue a minute and then I'll put the Dura Clear on it. Open this back up. And we'll spread that again and I'll let it dry. You could give him freckles on his face if you wanted. You could do all kinds of stuff to make him individual. Your washing's nearly dry. I washed my new uh, handkerchief dress and I've got it on a hanger in there. Uh, Greg put up new. Uh, laundry poles, but he's never strung the line on them. So maybe I can get him and Scott to do that next weekend. The air quality has been so bad. I haven't wanted to hang anything out to collect allergens. Scott's been struggling. If you wanted to bring this out more, when the glue is dried, you could go around it with a pen or the Posca pen or a Bic pen, something. Just put an outline around it. But I just think it's cute. With the, it looks like bubbles floating, him around, floating around him. So what's everybody got planned for your week ahead? You got any special plans for this week? Mm. See if it's getting getting dry. House painting. Oh, we need to do that too. I need to scrape the shingle, the sh shingles, not the shingles, the shutters, because the paint is coming. I need to scrape the loose paint 
I've painted them several years ago, but and we hung them back up, but the sun has made them bubble here and there. So I need to scrape them where they're peeling. And then I'm going to use that um, gripper primer that's got like Elmer's glue mixed with it to kind of seal everything down and then paint them again. Ugh, doctor's appointments. That's no fun, but they're usually a necessity. Yeah, I'd like to do the whole pull all my clothes out and try things on and just get rid of the stuff that's in my closet and drawers that I don't use at, or doesn't fit me at all and just get rid of it. I've been focusing on looking for colorful things at the thrift store. And I found two dresses in this last week that are <clears throat> three quarters inch sleeve or longer. And um, I'm just tired of having so much. You're thrifting on Wednesday. We will probably go, if we go at all, it'll be on Tuesday so we can get the old fart discount. <clears throat> I wish I could get Scott to go to the doctor and get an antibiotic for his sinuses. Exactly. Let somebody else have a turn with some of these clothes and things that I have. I might could do that today while the fellows are at work. Greg will be leaving here shortly. Hopefully he's paying attention to the time. I'm leaving it up to him. He's, he's old enough to know better. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do this and hope everything's dry enough. You just squeeze a whole bunch out. This is what Dee Dee does. And then just spread it with your fingers. Because you're basically moving just the surface of the, the varnish instead of pushing down into the paint. And yes, it does look like a lot. But you give it a couple days to dry and it gives you a beautiful finish. I could probably set this out on the porch and it would dry really fast. All right. Just kind of get it smooth and let it dry. I'm going to make noise. I got to get some more wet ones out. Hopefully Tiffy doesn't jump up here and jump right into it. Oh, that's great news, Kathy. That's great news. I need to lose about 50 pounds. All right, so this is going to get set aside, but that's our cute little baby. I'll set him aside here somewhere. Set him on top of the paint. And I'll show you the envelopes that are already finished. And the cat's going to be coming flat up. And they'll, once it's dry, you can see it gives a little sheen to it. And then I fold the envelope back together. I should have signed and dated those, but I think I can still sign them once they're varnished. But it gives you a really nice finish on the envelopes. And these will go out in happy mail at some point or another. But that's all I was going to share this morning. My problem is, Kathy, is I love to bake. And I know I'm not supposed to eat it because I'm diabetic, type 2. Oh, I love baking. But I got to get my um, blood sugar under control. All right, so everybody have a great day. I'll see some of you at Janet Nash's at 9 o'clock. So in about, what, an hour and a half. So you all take care, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.